Thank you for your continued support. Today we are going to be playing as Turkey. So the research is the same, the electronics and industry. And we are going to start off with uh, military factories. We don't really have any time to start off with uh, civilian factories. And two factories on transport planes because we need them to uh, paradrop some nation or other. Might start with F and end with France, you know. I'm gonna do martial law for the Kurdish side of Turkey. Soviet Union breaks down. We have the PP to hire the silent workers. And wait for a little more PP to hire the financial expert. First order of business is to switch to the brown ideology as soon as possible. And then we'll continue doing the focuses until uh, we can get to Misaki Milli. Keep doing the decisions that give stability and war support, like republicanism, revolutionism, and nationalism. And also note that revolutionism actually gives communist and fascist support, so it helps you get the 30% needed to actually do the focus called Fatherland First. Let's hire Fahrettin Altay. Kadro movement is done. Paratroopers is complete. So before I do this, I check every state to see if there is a little flag and none of them have the flag. So I check the percentages and the one with the highest percentage gets the click. And we got defeated this once, but uh, that's the way to get rid of the negative modifiers on the states. We formed the red shirts. Okay, we are gonna retire Ataturk, so Recep Peker is now our leader. Very nice guy. Red shirts is done. Anti-communist raids, which gives more stability. As for military access from Italy, we can't get it from Germany yet, but we are gonna get it soon. I'm gonna justify a war goal to Albania, because we are going to backstab Italy. So I'm deploying a lot of these uh, divisions and positioning them in Italy. Italy is actually pretty weak at the start of the game, so this is not going to be difficult. Like this. Deploy them and send them over. You can also buy guns, by the way, because the, the one thing that we are missing is guns. Learning from the Great War is complete. Continue with the army. And after that, uh, we are gonna be able to... Rip Ataturk. We are gonna be able to uh, do the next focus for our political tree, which is Fatherland first. So I just check. This is 29%, so I'm gonna wait a little, then continue with the focus. Because it requires 30%. So 50 uh, transports is what we need, so at 50 you can just cancel it. I'm gonna tech into fighters, but uh, don't do that, I didn't have enough time to uh, produce any fighters. There we go. We have declared war on Albania and we are backstabbing Italy. So now a little bit of um, 
micro is needed for Italy to get all the land. And let's justify a war goal to Switzerland because it's gonna take a lot of time even with the modifiers that we have. So I'm gonna one by one order every single division to capture the land in Italy. We have Roma right now, but uh, we're gonna have a big problem with Roma. Mussolini is deposed. A little bit of micro goes a long way. By the way, I'm gonna declare war on Portugal because we can justify war goals now. 20 days. Tibet, Nepal. So as you can see, Rome is holding on. Let's continue down the focuses. We don't need to do anything else. Just keep justifying and declaring. Declare on Tibet, declare on Nepal, justify on Iran, finally we are done with Italy. The next order of business is to take care of the allies. We are done. Now, I can attack Iran, but uh, our army is positioned in Italy, so we need to get our army here first. And I'm gonna make a little perturbed division. To take care of France. Continue down the access part. Get military access from Germany. And then we can join access whenever we want. So I'm just gonna join them right now. By the way, I would have done this sooner if Germany could have. They have done Auschwitz. Why is Austria thing? Oh, there we go. <laughs> So yeah, we, we need to move into Germany to set up naval invasions into United Kingdom when the uh, war goal on Switzerland completes. Because like we need to wait for Switzerland anyway, because that timing is not going to go down anytime soon. So might as well build up, you know? So I'm going to set up more uh, paratroop divisions, uh, paratroop orders. To cap France because you don't know where their uh, divisions are positioned, you know. And just as I was saying that, I caught a glimpse of something. UK is actually giving us military access because they like us. So why not just backstab them? I'm gonna get military access and position my troops in the UK, and then I'm gonna call in Germany for air superiority. Justify a war goal on Spain and other countries. Ireland. Yeah, we need to micro a little in the UK. Liverpool, Newcastle, Hull. We haven't captured those. The north is usually the easiest part, so I'm gonna ungarrison them. 
Yeah, we need to take Dover. We have taken London. And we need to watch the paratroop divisions. Tibet joined allies. Portugal. Nepal, Bhutan. And of course Switzerland. So we haven't actually kept France. We need Paris. So I'm gonna take more divisions from the Swiss border and just make them paratroopers. And drop them into France. Let's give them orders. This happens sometimes when uh, France actually defends their land properly. Yep, there we go. France is done. Let's keep justifying and uh, declaring war on other countries. And we're done with UK. Well, we have 93% of the war score, so we're gonna get almost everything. So that's no problem. There we go, we took almost everything. We have majority of Africa, we have Canada. I couldn't declare on uh, Ireland because uh, Sweden guaranteed them, so I'm gonna start up a naval invasion to Sweden. Let's expand our division template. Declare on Saudi Arabia, to Yemen, to Ireland, and we are gonna be at war with uh, Sweden as well. But the problem is, we have been fighting for so long, our troops are kind of out of manpower and equipment, so we are gonna be stuck in Sweden for a bit, and also uh, in uh, Spain. But after a while, uh, we are going to be conquering them anyway, because they, they can't really resist us. Like, they're not really defending here, but uh, they will come to their border and uh, defend their country. But Ireland is not that problem, and also Saudi Arabia. Yemen actually gives the most resistance in the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, and that's because of the terrain that they have. We also have a huge navy now because we took the French, uh, the British navy and also the Italian navy. So we have the biggest navy in the world right now. Ireland is done. We annex all. Now we can reposition that army group into Spain or wherever we want. We are also justifying war goals on other countries. That's the main point of doing world conquests, just keep justifying war goals. And Turkey is a main... Uh, Tur Turkey has a gr great bonus on that aspect, because you get 40% uh, more uh, bonus on uh, war justifications. So you can justify a war goal on two nations at the same time uh, on 10 days. So that's, that's pretty good. As you can see, Spain is out of the civil war, but uh, not, they are not really prepared to fight a major war with a big nation. But we are not really a big nation yet, even though we have a lot of lands, like we need to actually produce a lot of guns, you know? Because the garrisons are actually taking a lot of our guns right now. As you can see, Yemen is a big problem. And we actually lost our uh, war justification on uh, Iran, I think. Yeah, we can't break this, uh, the Swedish. I've tried, but 
this time we are actually prepared to take Göteborg. But they're not defenseless, they are defending their country pretty well. Yeah, Spain is almost done also. And if you look at the dates, we are still at 1939. Like, uh, Germany hasn't declared on Poland yet. And we have taken almost all of the European nations for ourselves. There we go, Spain is done, we annex all. Liberia is also done, and the Yemen is defending. Justify on Afghanistan, justify on Siam. Also Iceland. Because whenever Germany justifies on Denmark and declares war, Iceland is going to be free, so we need to take them. Yeah, actually Yemen and uh, Afghanistan are two problematic countries that give a lot of uh, resistance. But we have taken them. Now we can take Iraq, we can take Iran. Finland is also in the war, so I'm gonna declare war on Finland and get uh, military access from the Soviet Union, so we can backstab them as well. Let's uh, put our troops on the Russian lands. Germany attacks Norway. And now we can do Misaka Milli. But Germany is gonna get mad at us when we do this. There it is. Iran is almost done, yep. We annex everything. And we get ready for war against Soviet Union. After we are done with Sweden, of course. And I'm gonna set up um, collaboration governments in USA at the same time because we have the civilian factories to spare and make our job easier and faster by doing that. We are now the Spam Master. Sweden is done. Now we are at war with Finland, so let's continue on. By the way, whenever I declare war on some country, I always try to make the um, support the logistic part of the war better by building railroads or uh, ports so that my troops actually have a lot of um, logistic support and they have their organization. And Finland is gone. Yeah, makes everything, and uh, I'm building up uh, the railroads in Canada to attack United States. We're gonna declare war on Mongolia and Order 66, the Soviet Union. Keep justifying war goals, and we need to micro a little because the Soviet Union is huge.
but as you can see they can't really hold us off they are really powerful We have taken Moscow. Our first collaboration government is done in the United States. We have 45%. And Soviets are ready to fall. There we go. We annex everything and we have the whole of Russia. Now we need to take USA. And as I was saying that and preparing the war, something happened. Can you guess what? Japan declares war. I don't know why this happens, but this also triggers Germany into declaring war on Japan because uh, they are guaranteeing us and we need to fight Japan now, I guess. Okay, we have the most powerful navy in the world, so we just need to navally invade them. This enables us to get military access from United States. So we can do Order 66 on United States and also China by doing this. The main problem is the peace deal, actually. So we can actually do Turanist Ambition now, because it takes a long time to do it. But when we do that, we are gonna exit Axis, and that enables us to get military access from all of the Axis powers, like Bulgaria and uh, Hungary, as they are major powers. Because we are fighting the same enemy, and we can click the button now, and form the Kaganit of Turan. The advent of Turan. Turkish conquests have progressed to the point that the Turkish government has felt it justifiable to proclaim themselves as the Kaganate of Turan. The debut of this new empire has sparked shock across the world as there were very few observers who believed that Turkey would even be capable of fully recovering from its war of independence in the following decades, let alone establishing an entirely new empire that spanned continents. If reports are to be believed, the newly formed Turkish may not be finished with its rapid expansion, with Mehmet Recep Peker stating that shall never cease their conquests until every Turk in the world has been liberated. The world can only continue to watch with bated breath. We are unstoppable. So now that we have a lot of factories and manpower to spare, we are going to get military access from Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and prepare our Order 66 Bon Axis. And while doing that, we need to enable in Japan, and Germany is actually helping us do that. There we go, we have landed, and we need to take the port. We have the port, and now we need to push into Japan.
we can declare war on Mexico because we are ready to backstab United States. Let's declare war on all of the countries that we have prepared war goals on, all the American ones at least. There we go. And US is actually very fast to fall. US is ours. We have the peace deal. We have 51% war score and Japan has 48. So I'm gonna try to annex whatever I can and let Japan grab the rest. And let Japan grab the rest. We have the peace deal. Now we need to defeat Japan and order 66 China. I'm going to continue justifying war goals on the other southern uh, American nations like um, Argentina and Brazil, but know that uh, Argentina can become a major and Brazil will definitely become a major. So the war is over with Japan and I'm gonna just skip through the peace deal. The main thing is that we have grabbed a lot of land, especially the southern American uh, countries, but Japan still exists. So we will need to take care of them again. And the problem is we have a peace treaty, so we will need to wait for that. And we are ready to take on Axis. Declare war on Denmark ourselves. Again, a little micromanagement is required to cap Bulgaria, Hungary and Germany, but uh, it's, it's not a big problem. We have a lot of divisions on the field. Also, you don't need to garrison all of the land that Germany has, you just need to grab their uh, victory points and the cores, because what matters to capitulating is the course that you have. I don't need to put uh, divisions into Krakow, Warsaw or Prague because they are not cores of Germany. Now annoyingly, uh, Romania doesn't join the war, so we can't actually get them in the peace deal. So we will need to justify a war goal on them and conquer them uh, separate from Axis. We have the peace deal. We annex everything and get all the navies as well. Peace deal is done. We need to get um, Norway and also Romania. And China is next. Our troops are positioned. And I could I made a mistake here because Guangxi clique also becomes a major, so it takes a little more time than uh, usual. But uh, it's not a big problem to actually capitulate them. Again, a little micromanagement is required because they sometimes uh, protect their uh, victory points, like Shanghai. But you don't really need to fight the other smaller uh, Chinese factions, like Shangxi, Shui Sanma, Communist China, or Xinjiang. We need to take care of Norway also, and Yugoslavia, and Romania. And there is one big nation that we need to conquer uh, after all these, and that is Brazil. Yugoslavia is done, we annex everything, and Romania is next, declare war, China is done, we annex all, and now we can add the Chinese lands into our Turanist Empire. As you can see we have the war goal but we can't declare because it hasn't time yet, 
Uh, we still have the peace deal. And we declare on Brazil. They join Axis. I'm actually navally invading them because it takes a lot of time to walk into their victory points. And navally invading them makes it uh, way easier. Romania is done. We have Rio. And I'm going to prepare another naval invasion from the captured land into the northern northeast uh, Brazil, where their new capital is. It's a little annoying to do this, uh, but uh, what can you do, you know? Like at this point, we are at November 1942, and I really wanted to finish the world conquest in 1942. We have landed, and we have the land, and yeah, we annex all, and it's a world conquest by Cagnet of Turan. I hope you liked the video, please give me a like, and subscribe to my channel. My last video was a big success, and I hope this one is as well, but I doubt it, because Yan Mayan was special. Yeah, this time I actually conducted the World Conquest uh, without any Air Force, which is surprising, especially for me. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.